Yeah, oh, you're there again. Oh uh, yeah, draft science video, I think. Yeah, I think I've decided that's where we're going. Well, tree. <laughs> it's probably a noisy tree. It's like three to four trees, they all squeaking because they're like leaning on each other. They're all gonna fall over someday. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. I've been doing that for years though, every day, squeaking. Anyway, <sighs> okay. Uh, Pyro, she was talking again about this uh, physics crap. <laughs> yeah, and uh, light and uh, slits and all that crap again. So anyway, let me go over this again in my head. This is really draft stuff. All right, well, there's different ways to conceptualize concepts like uh, frequency and amplitude and stuff like that. So, I mean, theoretically, you could explain these transmission mediums, but you know what I mean, they're, they're basically just energy. Uh, but we use them to transmit information. So you have this idea of, like, I have a source, and I'm going to make some waves. We call them radio waves or whatever. So basically what I do is I vibrate something. I make some, some waves. I, I make a disruption in the medium, uh, the thing, and a bunch of stuff flies off of it because it's vibrating. So all the, all the, the loose stuff flies off. And uh, so it's going to fly off in a pattern. And <coughs> so, I mean, the component of it is going to be, well, depending on how hard or fast the vibration is, we'll decide how, how strong, how much dust or fleck or whatever you want to call it uh, will be flown off in that one little movement. So if it's a vigorous movement, a lot of stuff will fly off. And if it's uh, less vigorous, then littler stuff will fly off. And uh, so that might be considered the amplitude or strength of a wave is really how much stuff flew off. So every time I vibrated it, there'd be this wave, this, this amount of junk all in a, in a, in a confined space of time. Um, but it'd be a whole lot of it. And so that would be a, a powerful wave when it comes and hits you because it's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, now, frequency would be just how long it takes before the next wave shows up. So, frequency is kind of a component of, uh, you know, more than one. <laughs> you know, you can't have it without more than one of something. And that's, uh, in my opinion, that explains something like radio waves. Now, it might be completely wrong, <laughs> you know, but it's an explanation that works in the sense that it's conceivable. Okay, yeah, I get it. You throw stuff off, it creates uh, a wave of stuff, and then how strong that wave is is going to be dependent on how vigorously you threw it off, and then how often the waves come will just depend on how often you throw stuff off. So, yeah, makes sense. And so there's nothing about the particles themselves that has any constituent, you know, any component in here. It's just a matter of... Um, uh, volume dictated by how many of the little things there are and then uh, the other component would be frequency how often the little things show up uh, you know how regular their pattern of arrival would be um, but then there's another way of looking at it wherein how what, when you vibrate something you'd be throwing different kinds of things off <laughs> versus you know big things versus little things are things that are weakly held and things that are strongly held uh, you know harder to push off and uh, so then you'd have um, a component in the equation that have to do with um, the substance itself like what are you throwing off and if they're not all equal if all the things holding on to the thing you're vibrating aren't holding on to it equally because they themselves are different. You know, some are girls, you got weaker arms. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, uh, then the equation gets a little more complicated. So, getting back to the two slit experiment, uh, yeah, the whole idea of calling it a duality, you know, wave particle duality, blah, 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 um, sort of just implies that somehow it's a, it's a given, uh, you know, that something, component of both is somehow in this thing, and, and it just doesn't, to me that just, you know, 
It's a contradiction. It's either a wave or it's a particle, but you can't be both, um, in my opinion. Uh, so there's lots of ways to to explain what might be happening. Um, you know, with the two slit experiment and the way you end up with a pattern over time of, of arrivals that mimic, and that's the key word here, it appears to be an interference pattern. But that's just the appearance. Um, you can put, you know, you put regular light through a prism and it does some funky shit. Uh, rainbows. I mean, that's a, you know, that's some funky stuff going on there. I mean, when you try to figure out the physics of that, it kind of hurts your brain a little bit to try to just trace the, the path of those photons and how exactly that configuration happens in a huge atmosphere and uh, that the same rainbow is visible from lots of different angles and positions is, you know, so that one gets, you know, I mean, it's, I, there's nothing wrong with the physics, I just mean it's hard to visualize, it's hard to conceptualize exactly what's taking place <coughs> with these billions of droplets of water and uh, what their what the end product is. Man, that girl's hot. <laughs> Woo! Well tanned blonde. Yep, I like it. Uh, anyway, <sighs> girls and <laughs> physics don't mix. Ooh. Uh, anyway, anyway. What the fuck was I talking about? <sighs> okay, so the blonde photon. No, that isn't it. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> so, you could, it's just what the end result you get is, is yeah, okay, you get these, this something that looks like an interference pattern. But that could be a pattern that's creatable in a lot of different ways. I mean, we know that electrons have very specific energy levels. They only release photons at very specific points. There's no um, there's no analog element to that um, equation. It's a very digital thing. They have to be at a certain energy level, and if they don't reach that energy level, it don't happen until the next influence that'll get them to that necessary point where they will release the photon. Blah 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 blah. Um, and so there could be a similar mechanism involved here. I mean, the whole point of the two slits is to create refraction, is to create a prism effect. And uh, we see what the prism does. It splits light because it refracts light differently. At different frequencies, the light will bend more. And uh, that's the sole point here, uh, that these photons will only bend certain ways, though. They won't bend some sort of um, uh, analog way where it's anywhere on the scale. They might only bend 20%, 40%, 60%, very hard, uh, rigid rules over how much bending they will do. And that'll end up creating the same kind of pattern. So it might have more to do with interference and refraction than it has to do, uh, I mean, the interference of the slits themselves. And, uh, and less to do with any legitimate or real um, interference between subsequent waves of particles that might go through the slits. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, uh, not perfectly stated. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, this is the kind of drawing board stuff. Really should have images to go with it or something. Um, yeah, because uh, but there could be a component to uh, you know photons and even electrons where they have a wobble, you know, or a frequency of their own because they don't uh, they're not an eccentric that they're an eccentric particle, not a perfectly round cannonball. Instead, they could be uh, you know a spinning uh, rod, and that would give them the capacity to have nuance of behavior. Um, that could also account for it, because if the rod is spinning this way and hits the slits, it's going to do one thing. If it's spinning this way, it's going to do another. Um, and the slits would end up being a filter for those different kinds of photons, which would end up creating the illusion 
of an interference pattern when all you really have is a pattern created by the filtering of photons uh, into their what form they generally take. There might be a dominant form, but you're just basically segregating them out from each other uh, based on the fact that the slit will affect different photons when spinning different directions different ways. Uh, yeah. So, I think that's enough. Uh, yeah, so nothing written in stone here. I'm not making any contentions beyond the fact that there's a mechanical, very likely simple explanation for what is manifest in the two-slit experiment. And it is really a sad commentary on science that scientists have chosen uh, predominantly uh, to, uh, you know, come up with a mystical, phantasmagorical, strangled, uh, you know, explanation rather than tend to go towards something more simple, logical, and to do, most importantly, the further testing uh, that might demonstrate what is going on. And there's a grotesque lack of that. So anyway, till next time and such. <sighs> Earplugs are missing again. <sighs> Drop in here. <sighs> till next time. Oh, forgot to mention. Uh, yeah, Pyro's doing a DVD book kind of thing, and uh, so, you know, I'll post a link to that below. And, uh, yeah, that's a good thing, Pyro. Uh, except, you know, his old videos are kind of, um, you know, they're all that YouTube uploady crap. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's actually going to work on a, in high definition. Uh, so you might as well low definition it and make it a six hour DVD or something. But I guess that won't play as a DVD. So it's like you have to, you have to use the extra bit rate even though you don't need it. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, another flaw in the system. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, that's really dumb. Uh, the way they make it. Well, I guess it's a TV shows work though. You can get like six hours of TV shows. I think, something like that anyway, on a DVD, and they work. So, you should be able to do it that way, and then you can do even more videos. But anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, but they're, you know, videos are crap quality, so shit. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea. Make new videos. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't believe in think your philosophy is crap anyway. This whole whatever, skeptical relativism bullshit it ain't going to go anywhere. Nope, ain't the truth. Isn't where the human race will land eventually if it survives. Not logical. Uh, yep. Truth is not relative. Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's only one of them out there. All you need to do is be explicit. So, the truth right now has some vagary due to the fact that we don't have clear vision. But that's all. So it's just two, it's the only relative part right now is how much relative distortion we impose on it because of our broken brains, because we have God delusions in our fucking head or unicorn delusions or whatever. Have a bunch of crap in the way. Uh, yeah, but uh, that has nothing to do with the truth. That has to do with our brains. And, uh, you know, there's no reason to codify that as being part of a reality or necessary reality. Because eventually we'll get rid of all that uncertainty and ignorance and uh, contradictory and hypocritical and duplicitously selfish and all that kind of shit. And we'll get that out of the logical equation. So, anyway, we will, Mr. Spock, if we survive. It's just the inevitable place brains have to go. Even if they're raised by ignorant assholes, you can't unwrite all the books. You can't uh, undo what has been revealed to be the truth. You can resist it, but over time, you're just not going to be able to silence it. You're not going to be able to put the, the round earth <laughs> theory. You're not going to be able to hide it. People are going to get it. Anyway, um, I don't want to go over 15 minutes, so I guess I better shut up. So anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, no, he's got a website. I have to, I don't know, it's got not a great name, but anyway. I'll have the link from my website. Maybe we can do some things, mutual projects we can work on together, and such and so forthy, and do something brilliant and interesting, and such. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that other guy's supposed to be, supposed to be working on a file uploader for me. <laughs> yeah, get to that asshole. No, I can find one, probably. Find some open source one. All right, anyway, till next time, blah, 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 blah.